Hello and welcome to Oregon TV's general election coverage and I'm Stacey Calloway. I'm joined by George Sennett. How are you doing today, George? I'm doing terrific. Okay, Stacy, it's been about a year since we've done this, hasn't it? It has, it has. <laughs> and so I'm excited to give some um, live results. Well, you know, we, we've got some great, I think we've got to go and have a great show tonight. We've got some uh, live performances coming in. We're going to have uh, Chris Barnett join us for a little interview. But, and, but first of all, we're going to have uh, Penny Schultz uh, join us and uh, talk about today's election and how it went. And the best part is that we've already heard that there's one precinct that's already reported. It's at 0.39%. 0.39%, right. right. So it's going to be a little early to, to uh, kind of come up with some real results, but we're going to give you what we do have. And uh, we think that uh, we've, we've got a, like I say, we've got a good show. We've got some uh, special uh, programs we're going to run where we're actually going to talk about the election, how it's being run. And we're, we're going to also talk about a little bit about today's activity in our polling places. Right. And so the funny fact about that is you and I both voted absentee ballot, right? That's right. Okay. And uh, it was nice and easy to do it that way. It was. So, you know, you, if you're voting absentee, you don't have to go to the polling place. But even though we voted absentee, you and I both voted absentee, we understand that there was a lot of activity today in the polling places. Absolutely, and as you can see in some of the video, um, even our uh, producer or director mentioned that he had to stay in line for about 30 minutes or so from start to finish. So. Right, right. And uh, I, I have a good friend that worked uh, the library today, and he basically said that there were between, uh, by the time the first shift ended, which was about one o'clock, there were about over 500 people that already had, had attended there. Wow. So the, the activity is high mm -hmm. based on a, a midterm election. Right. And you, do you think that maybe a lot of people went out because of the proposals that may threaten some of you know, their own livelihoods or what have you? Well, I think that the proposals have a lot to do with it. But also, I think there's some pretty tight races taking place, uh, especially within our own uh, county area. Mm -hmm. We've got some uh, races for uh, several of the offices. And uh, so the polling that's taken place so far has been pretty close. So right. we've got a very tight governor's race. We've got a very tight uh, race for attorney general. And so I think we're going to have some interesting results this, this evening. Right. And then you also spoke to um, a few people about some of the precinct changes, about some of the precinct locations. Yeah. Um, what's happened is uh, some of the old precinct locations where we voted in the past have changed. So uh, when I've worked in polls in the past, uh, I've always worked uh, precinct six, and that was always at a Walden Middle School, and that was changed. So we had some, uh, a little bit of confusion today, but not a lot, where people actually went to the wrong location uh, to do their, to, to make their votes. Right, and and the key is that they still managed to to go through with it. They managed to still, you know, yeah, make the, their vote. Yeah, and and what happens is uh, typically what happens is that they they get directed to the, the, the right uh, polling place Afterward. so they can make their vote and, and so on. And uh, from what I understand, there was no uh, 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 malicious activity taking place. Good. Everything went very smoothly today from what, what I could gather anyway. Right. And you th you think that maybe you and I discussed it, but we didn't. We both just decided. We forgot to wear um, our I Voted stickers. I Voted pin? Yeah. <laughs> My, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't get one. Uh, when you vote uh, absentee, I guess you don't get one in the mail. And you know, and that's what I did. I I literally walked in, and you know, said, "Okay, I'm going to vote," and then I picked it up afterwards because it was just I don't know. It was just something that I'm used to doing ever since I was you know 18, yeah. which was a while ago. <laughs> right. Well, like I say, we 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 have some pretty uh, interesting races taking place, uh, not only because of. Um, We've, we've had a total redistricting that take place in Michigan, and the redistricting has uh, placed some of the candidates in kind of awkward situations, mm -hmm. where they had uh, pretty well established their uh, their um, uh, the knowledge of of their particular location or right. their particular district uh, in the past. That all changed, right. so we had this independent commission in uh, in Michigan completely redistrict the whole state because of what's happened in the past. We had a lot of gerrymandering that went on, went on mm -hmm. where we placed uh, people with uh, specific uh, 
leaning uh, t tendencies, political leading tendencies in particular districts so that they were pretty well assured that once they were voted in that, in that district, they would be continued to be re-voted re in based upon how the districts were organized. Okay. So based on that, uh, we've had a lot of different things happening in, in especially, especially the state of Michigan. Right. And one of the ones that I can specifically talk about is Alyssa Slotkin. She uh, used to represent our area here in Lake Orion, but no longer because of the district redistricting that took place, she no longer represents us. Right. So we now have somebody, a couple of other candidates. Right, and so we're still, you know, um, waiting for a few people to talk to. So I think this would be the perfect time to um, maybe go over some of the proposals. You know, maybe we can um, see whether or not some of the things that the um, residents have had to vote on. Right. Okay, so we're gonna um, take a look at that and maybe look at what the video is explaining some of the ballot measures. During the November 8, 2022 general election, Orion area residents were asked to vote on several proposals. Michigan residents had three state proposals to vote on, the first one being 22-1. This is a proposal to amend the state constitution to require annual public financial disclosure reports by legislators and other state officers, and change the state legislature term limit to 12 years total in legislature. The proposed constitutional amendment would require members of legislature, governor, lieutenant governor, secretary of state, and attorney general to file annual public financial disclosure reports after 2023. This would include assets, liabilities, income sources, future employment agreements, gifts, travel reimbursements, and positions held in organizations except religious, social, and political organizations. This amendment would also require legislature to implement but not limit or restrict reporting requirements. If adopted, this proposal will replace current term limits for state representatives and state senators with a 12-year total limit in any combination between House and Senate. Except a person elected to Senate in 2022 may be elected the number of times allowed when that person became a candidate. The next state proposal is 22-2 which is a proposal to amend the state constitution to add provisions regarding elections. The proposed amendment would recognize the fundamental right to vote without harassing conduct, require military or overseas ballots to be counted if postmarked by election day, provide voter right to verify identity with photo ID or signed statement, provide voter right to single application to vote absentee in all elections, provide that only election officials may conduct post-election audits, require nine days of early in-person voting, allow donations to fund elections which must be disclosed, and require Canvas boards certify election results based only on the official records of votes cast. The final state proposal is 22-3, a proposal to amend the state constitution to establish new individual right to reproductive freedom including the right to make all decisions about pregnancy and abortion, allow the state to regulate abortion in some cases, and forbid prosecution of individuals exercising established right. If adopted, the proposed amendment would establish new individual right to reproductive freedom, including right to make and carry out all decisions about pregnancy, such as prenatal care, childbirth, postpartum care, contraception, sterilization, abortion, miscarriage management, and infertility. This amendment would allow the state to regulate abortion after fetal viability, but not prohibit if medically needed to protect a patient's life or physical or mental health. It would forbid state discrimination in enforcement of this right, prohibit prosecution of an individual or a person helping a pregnant individual for exercising rights established by this amendment. It would also invalidate state laws conflicting with this amendment. The next ballot measure was a county proposal for Oakland County residents. The Oakland County Public Transportation Millage proposal would authorize Oakland County to levy a millage for the purpose of funding public transportation services in Oakland County. This would include operating, maintaining, improving, and expanding transit services, creating and expanding new fixed routes for bus service, connecting local communities, 
expanding transportation services for seniors, veterans, and people with disabilities, and providing transportation to get employees to jobs, patients to health care, students to colleges and universities, for the general public to have more transportation options, and for related purposes authorized by law. This millage would be levied at a maximum rate of 0.95 mills for a period of 10 years, beginning in 2022 and ending in 2031. This millage would replace an expiring millage levied by the Oakland County Public Transportation Authority, supporting the Suburban Mobility Authority for Regional Transportation, also known as SMART, and fund replacement of other local public transportation millages. If this new millage is approved and levied, revenue will be distributed to Oakland County, SMART, NOTA, OPC, and the WOTA. It is estimated that $66,163,000 will be collected in the first year. Expenditure of revenue from the millage will be subject to oversight by the Oakland County Board of Commissioners and to independent audits. The final proposal on the ballot was for Orion Township residents to renew the Parks and Recreation millage. The proposal would levy up to 0.9537 mills as reduced by millage rollbacks required by law for a period of five years beginning in 2023 through 2027 for operating and maintaining the township's parks and recreation services and facilities. The proceeds of the levy will be used for operation, programming, equipment, facilities, personnel, maintenance, acquisition, capital improvements, and all related costs of the Orion Township Parks and Recreation Department. It is estimated that this proposal would result in the authorization to collect up to $2,020,953.49 in the first year if approved and levied. What a thorough explanation of all of those proposals. Um, you know, election time and election season is such a busy time, and we're so excited to have um, Orion Township Clerk Penny Schultz joining us to give us an update as to how was today's voter turnout. Thanks for uh, joining us today. How was this year's turnout for this election? We're going to have around that mid 80 plus percent. We had 8,500 um, absent voter ballots that were requested, mm -hmm. and we are still tabulating those ballots. It's about 8.30, 9 o'clock right now, so we are not done tabulating those ballots in the sequestered absent voter county board. We hope to have all of those results in very shortly. How was the energy um, like today in terms of people coming out to vote? People are excited. There's a lot of information out there. Um, they're making informed decisions. Everyone wanted to vote. We had a lot of new same day registrations and those people were also given a ballot so they could vote as well. So a lot of young people got registered today that may not have done so prior to the election, but wanted to make sure that their voice was heard also. All age groups are being represented here. Wonderful. And that's what we want to hear. Um, so, of course, elections are run successfully with the help of several people. I know that yeah. they were trying to get George um, to go out there today, but he had some other um, business to take care of, mainly being in here. Right. Right. So can you talk to us about the process that someone goes through to become a an election worker? Sure, that's a great question. So basically what happens is you make an application. We have an application form that we receive from the state of Michigan and people fill that out. It asks for their party affiliation, their experience, name, address, any information that they wanna give us on that application form. And then we put them into a master list. And about six months before every single election, I will send out via email to all 300 of our master list workers, their availability. I'll send a survey out and I wanna make sure when they can work. If they want a half day shift, morning or afternoon or full day shift. And once I get that survey results back, then I start to send out information regarding training. Training is the biggest piece regarding all of our election inspectors. We train before every election and we train on the absent voter, I'm sorry, we train on the e-poll book, the electronic poll book, as well as how to manage your precinct on election day. And so this year, how many people would you say actually participated in this election? 
There's about 180 people who participated and we have probably eight or nine people per precinct. We have a co-chair and a chairman. I know George, George Sennett was at right. our precincts for many years mm -hmm. and we always appreciated his help. We also have a sequestered absent voter county board, which has 17 members. And then we have a receiving board as well, which looks at all the returns to make sure they're sealed properly and all the information gets out to the probate court as well as the county clerk. So do you think this is gonna be a long night for you guys? We talked about at least one precinct already reporting right. at 0.39%. How late do you guys normally stay out there to get everything tabulated? Close to midnight. Well, I'll be home by midnight. That's what I'm telling my husband, Al. <laughs> okay, wonderful. And you're drinking your coffee? <laughs> I had a cup about two o'clock, but I have a lot of energy naturally, so. I know, I and you're still smiling. Excited. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm very happy that we're at this point, though. It's good to be at the end of this. Okay, would you like to say anything to the people who have you know, helped you along, like maybe even some of the election workers, any thank yous or anything in particular? Oh, thanks for this opportunity. I have an amazing staff. My employees do such a great job and they're always kind. Everyone that comes in has a unique situation. My employees are form, informed. They do a wonderful job just serving the community and they make sure that every single ballot gets counted. Also, I wanna thank our hosts of our precincts. We have 15 different locations and so they do such a marvelous job letting us basically take over a part of their building for the entire day. And I'm so grateful to our first responders and police officers and also to the crew that delivers all this equipment. They do such a marvelous job. It's our Parks and Recreation Department and they do a fantastic job making sure that the precincts are ready. So think of it this way. I have an all day event for 31,000 people at 16 different locations wow. all at the same time. Wow. And it goes beautifully <laughs> because we have everyone participating. Well, wonderful. And thank you so much for that. And you know, once again, we appreciate everything that you do. Have a great night and get that second cup of coffee if you need it. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye for now. Thanks again. So we do have another interview that's ready to go as we move through tonight's program, and that's going to be with um, our Oregon Township Supervisor. So um, how was that? I mean, how does it feel? You know, she's thanking the election workers. I'll tell you, you know, Penny does a great job. Mm -hmm. She is, a, she, you know, we've, we've worked together for the last, I don't, I don't know, seven or eight, ten years on these elections and the training that, that, that you have to go through. It's intense. She does a terrific job in putting all this training together and getting all these, what, 130 or 40 people trained, right. uh, you know, to, to uh, do their jobs. And there are, like I say, there's about maybe uh, half a dozen different jobs at each precinct, mm -hmm. and you have to be very good at, at doing each one of those jobs. The most difficult, probably, or the, the most complicated is a thing called a poll book, okay. and where someone comes through and the first worker checks the IDs and make sure that they, their ID is okay, and then you proceed to the poll book where you're actually given a ballot mm -hmm. uh, with a ballot number on it and so on. So, and then you, then you cast your vote and then you come back and obviously uh, put your uh, ballot through the machine and it gets counted. All right, and so that's, there you have it. Yeah. So now we're gonna talk to um, Orion Township Supervisor Chris Barnett. How are you, Chris? Good evening. I'm great. How are you guys? Doing, doing? great. How You're doing great, Chris. Exactly. Good to see you. So we just had a chance to talk to Penny, and she thanked a lot of the election workers that would have you. But um, for this midterm election, you guys have um, a proposal to renew the Orion Township Parks and Recreation Millage. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so we um, it's the first time we've renewed the millage, and uh, it's we the, the great news about this millage it was it was just a renewal it was not an increase you see lots of increases this uh, time around we were just looking for a renewal and uh, we've been able to really accomplish um, our parks team led by Aaron Watley has done a great job accomplishing everything that we told our residents we would do uh, up until this point we still have some work to do uh, and we know that repeatedly we ask our residents why they choose to live here and it's the number one or two answer are the parks and amenities. Um, so uh, hopefully our residents agree and we'll see here shortly. Okay, so this is your opportunity to brag a little bit because this <laughs> millage was first adopted back in uh, 2018. And like you said, people are coming here because of all the things you're doing. So give us a couple of things that you've done 
with the um, Parks and Recs millage so far? Yeah, so uh, I mean, literally every single one of our parks, we have Jesse Decker in the southeast part of our community over by Oakland Township, Civic Center in the middle, Friendship, and then Camp Agawam. Every single one of our parks has seen improvements, projects, uh, most recently, uh, not quite yet open, but tennis ball and pickleball courts out at Friendship Park. Um, and, uh, and and we've seen, we're working on a, ba a beach expansion. One of our best kept secrets, uh, we'll, we'll let the word out to the viewers tonight, is the beach at Camp Agawam on Tommy's Lake. It's a perfectly clean, crystal clear lake. Uh, there's free, no charge to enter, uh, and it's a great place. So we're working on a beach expansion. Uh, but like I said, literally um, from little small improvements to, to large projects, we've done uh, literally dozens of projects. You can check them all out on our parks website. Uh, there's a there's a document called Promises Kept, uh, and I'm really proud of that. I'm proud of our team for doing what we said we do. I know I've been to a lot of your um, the a lot of the grain openings for all of that. So talk to me about. Do you think that this is going to pass? Do you think that people are going to click yes or check yes to renew it? Yeah, I, I believe so. I think um, you know there wasn't a, a, you know frankly there wasn't a real uh, campaign. Um, there were, you know, we had a small group that put some signs out and we did some education and, you know, in our role in my day job, at least we can't tell people, um, we can't tell people to vote yes or no on any, any ballot initiative. But in my personal time, uh, I did a lot of talking to groups and homeowners associations and just, like I said, letting them know, them know how we spent their money so far since 2018 and what, how we plan to uh, spend it if they, if they check that yes box uh, again tonight. So, um, I'm optimistic. I think our residents uh, value the importance of parks. And, you know, the, the good news is, you know, obviously no one likes taxes, um, but this has been a real, um, in my opinion, a, a success story. Um, we've actually done even more than what we said we'd do. And, and I think our residents see that and like that. So I'm, I'm optimistic that they'll, they'll, um, we'll, it'll be successful again tonight. And we'll keep working on some uh, additional great projects, including uh, one of the projects we just had a meeting on this week. Uh, the Peterson Lodge out at Camp Agawam, uh, you know, it was, it was built many, many years ago by the Boy Scouts and uh, needs lots of love and improvement. And we're looking to launch that project next spring if we're successful. And it'll be a great venue for events, uh, wedding receptions and community events and things like that right on the lake out at Times Lake. So just to put you on the spot, what do you think is going to be your legacy here in, in Lake Orion, in Orion Township? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, I, I don't think about that often, but I've been asked that recently, and I think that means people think I'm getting old or they're getting tired of me, <laughs> um, and I'm okay with both of those. I feel tired. Um, I love my job. I love this community. I am so blessed to serve the community I live in, and it's hard to believe it's been a decade. Um, it's wild to me. Ten years ago, basically tonight, is when I first got elected. Wow. And I've worked on lots of great projects. Um, you know, some of the bigger projects have been you know, the economic development things like the corridor improvement kind of revitalizing and relaunching and reimagining our Auburn Hills border on Brown Road. Um, the Baldwin project, you know, lots of people, yeah. uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to hit the hot button on roundabouts, are we okay. pro or not? but, um, you know, we, you know, that, that's been a really a, a great project. Um, I think the things that have been the most impactful to me are the things that our residents have asked for. Um, the thing that's, that's personally, um, been my the most fun project I've ever worked on in my career, um, public service or private sector combined is the Miracle Field. I love that place, and that was um, uh, it's been a dream of mine when I first visited the Southfield Field, and uh, you know we have a, a million dollar asset in our community that that brings in um, young people of all different abilities to participate in baseball, and uh, that's my happy place. So. If I had to pick like one favorite project, I would definitely say the Miracle Field, but okay. there's been a lot of great projects. Um, and I, like I said, I, I love elections. I love this day. It's stressful. I have friends on the ballot, um, but this is, what it's, this is what it's about. This is what our country's about. This is what our community's about is our residents getting the opportunity to pick their leaders. And, and uh, today's and, and you perfect. say this and, and you say this with a huge smile on your face. And, and one <laughs> thing we have to say, you know, here at ONTV, we always appreciate you coming in whenever we need you to. We know that you're about to go and hit a lot of good parties, right? Election parties. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if they're gonna be good. Okay. You know, <laughs> I, that's the outcome, but uh, I, I think I think our, no matter what our community wins today, and I, and I, I say that really seriously, I, I, I'm a nerd when it comes to this stuff. I've got my other computer here. I'm like, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm watching 15 different election results and even friends in different states that I've gotten to know over the years. 
uh, that I'm texting and rooting on and mayors from different cities across the country. Uh, I just was on the phone with Mayor uh, Hillary Sheevy, Mayor of Reno. We're from different political parties, but uh, she loves her city. She's up for re-election. I'm rooting her on. So, um, you know, it's just I love to see people out. I was out all day. Uh, I was here in the office this morning, but I was all afternoon. I'm all windburned and uh, just to see people <laughs> going to the polls. And it does seem like we have record turnout. I'm not sure exactly the numbers. I'm sure Penny probably clued clued our viewers in better on that. Mm -hmm. um, but there were tons of people all the way until eight o'clock. Um, I just left the precinct in downtown Lake Orion at the Village Hall, and there was a line almost at eight o'clock, almost out the door. So that is what we love to see. You know, so often we have these elections and we don't see a lot of engagement and, and people interested. And I think this election cycle, whether people were interested in the top of the ticket or all the way down to um, school board candidate candidates, I think we saw a lot of interest and excitement. Well, we have to say, I think two of the words that we would use is reinvigorated and re-energized. We have never seen so much excitement right. for an election. So wonderful. Right. Well, right. I'll tell you this. One thing I'm excited about uh, changing for the next election and bringing to our, our residents' attention is this litter of the signs. Uh, I know I know. Um, lots of people are not thrilled about the signs. Some people love them. Mm -hmm. Signs don't vote. And I don't love them. And I've been visiting other communities around Metro Detroit over the last few weeks and realized that we probably have more signs uh, than any other community. So I we'll probably want to clean that up a little bit, uh, keep them out of the public right away, um, because I'm sure you've noticed certainly that they are everywhere. I, yeah. uh, I, I, I normally call that political pollution, you know, with all I, I, these political and, signs. And I, I agree with it's you, unbelievable. I agree, so. Yeah. I, I did to clean it up that. a little bit. Uh, next cycle, our, some of our neighboring cities, uh, Auburn Hills and Rochester Hills, seem to have a better handle on that. So I've literally, right here on my desk, <laughs> is a copy of the Auburn Hills sign ordinance that I just got emailed to me today because I said, how are you guys controlling this? So I've already got notes to talk to our attorney to see if we can update our ordinance. We want people, we like the signs, but they're they're better in people's personal front yards than on literally every street corner. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you're, you're always hard at work. So he's signing ordinances and getting things done. So we know you're going to end up, you know, kind of relaxing or maybe getting excited about tonight. And then tomorrow morning, first thing you'll, you know, get on the job, right? That's right. We'll, we'll hit it hard. But um, thank you for what you guys do and your great coverage tonight. I've been watching. It's been fun. And, I appreciate uh, it. Hopefully it's not a real late night for all of us. I, yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so thank much you, again. Chris. And you have a great Thanks, evening. Guys. Thanks stay, for all you do. See stay you energized. Keep doing a good job, buddy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> always, always. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So we just heard from Orion Township Supervisor Chris Burnett. Yeah, well, back in October, the Orion Township uh, planted beautiful flowers and greenery to uh, greet our customers or our visitors as they enter the township. And thanks to a grant, let's take a look at this news break. Uh, to just learn about more, a little bit more about this. On Thursday, October 6th, Orion Township dignitaries, including members of the Corridor Improvement Authority Board, gathered on a parcel of land located near the intersection of Joslin and Brown Road. The group was celebrating the completion of a landscaping project that greets travelers as they head north into Orion Township from Auburn Hills. Three. Two, one, cut! <laughs> this gateway beautification project is the result of a $25,000 grant from Canadian National Railway and administered by America in Blue. Orion Township Chief of Staff Samantha Timko submitted the grant request last year and was notified that Orion Township was one of 10 recipients in the spring of 2022. We have uh, a working relationship with CN Railway, and they give us the money for the grants, but, but we administer the grant program. So we give 10 grants a year to communities that are along the rail lines of CN. So it, they've got to be in that, and, and CN comes into the states from Canada as far east as westernmost Pennsylvania, as far west as Minnesota, the western side of Minnesota, and it funnels uh, in Illinois all the way to the Gulf Coast. They came out and did a two a two full day assessment. Uh, we had someone come from Chicago and someone from England, and they spent two days with uh, myself and uh, Trustee Dalrymple, Trustee Urbanowski, other staff, Jenny Body, uh, and really toured our community, 
made tons of recommendations. And it's interesting because we got the report back this week and we didn't get all A's. <laughs> and it's okay because they gave us so many ideas of things we can do um, that, will, that, that will make us even better. So, and that's kind of the goal here is partnering with a group like this. It's not just the grant dollars, it's their expertise. You know, they have actually literally from around the world. On Saturday, October 1st, a delegation made up of Chief of Staff Samantha Timko and Trustees Julia Dalrymple and Kim Urbanowski attended an award ceremony in St. Louis where Orion Township was presented with the Community Vitality Award from America in Bloom. Yes, yeah, so we received one of the highest honors that they give out nationwide uh, for our community, which was incredible. Yes, yeah, so trustees Dalrymple and Urbanowski and then Sam Timko were in St. Louis just this past week. Um, we didn't know we were going to win this award. It's the high, it's like I said, one of the highest honors they give nationwide. And that was a direct result of them visiting our community and seeing the effort and the focus we put on our green spaces and plants and things like that. And like I said, we're only looking to grow that. Matter of fact, in the next couple weeks, we'll be asking the board to approve a couple hundred thousand dollars in plant, plantings all along the Baldwin corridor to even spruce that up even more. So we're excited about it. We know it's important for people to love where they live. And we think that having that, those pops of color all around town are, are one of those things that sets us sets apart. In Orion Township, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. Well, congratulations on that award win. Um, yeah. We'll certainly have more election coverage for you after our live broadcast has concluded. But Democracy Now! is an independent news program. We'll be live with an in-depth analysis and real-time results from congressional and gubernatorial races, as well as ballot initiatives from around the county. Let's take a look at this promo from Democracy Now! Hi, I'm Amy Goodman. Tune in November 8th for Democracy Now!'s live three-hour midterm election night special. Right. We'll be covering the key congressional races, which will determine the balance of power in Congress. Plus, we'll look at gubernatorial races and ballot initiatives around the country. Join us to hear the voices of activists, analysts, and grassroots leaders discussing how the movements on the ground will go forward following these important midterm elections. Tune in right here starting at 9 p.m. Eastern, that's 6 p.m. Pacific, on Tuesday, November 8th. Well, Democracy Now! airs every day on the ONTV public channel at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. So be sure to stay tuned after our live broadcast to check out their national coverage on the midterm elections. Okay, and I think this is a great time to start um, taking a look at some of the election results. Hopefully those are trickling in. Okay, so All right. we'll talk about the governor um, race at the county the, level. The governor's race at the county level. Let's take a look and see how that's going. Looks like at the county level, we have uh, Gretchen Whitmer with 142,517 votes. At 147, yep. And um, looks like Tudor Dixon is at 94,175 for 38%. So it's 60% for uh, Whitmer and 38% for Tudor. This now, I got to remind you that this is at the county level. Right. Okay, let's look at the state numbers now. We see that um, Michigan Governor, 184,701 votes at 54%, and then Tudor Dixon, 150,011 votes, and that's 44%. Now, we got to remind you that these are very early results. Right. And uh, typically, uh, the mail-in ballots are uh, a little bit behind these numbers. Okay. Yeah, we've got only 2% reporting at this point. But it looks like um, Democrats are slightly ahead at this point. So we're going to... All right. So I think uh, one of the other uh, races that are very interesting is the Secretary of State uh, numbers. Right. We and have so we uh, look Jocelyn at Benson uh, running against uh, Car Caramo. Mm -hmm. And she's at 149,519, and Caramo is at 88,122. And these are the county numbers. Looks like 37 out of 511 precincts are reporting. On the state level, uh, Johnson, uh, Jocelyn Benson has 175. 
and Carmano, Caramo has 120,000, I'm sorry, 136,645. So it's 56 at this point for Benson and 42 percent for Caramo. Okay, thank you Channel 4 for um, giving us some of these numbers. It's courtesy of Channel 4, some of these election results. And then if you look at it, uh, Gregory is at Stimpley at 4,109, Christine Schwartz, uh, 1,593, and then Larry Hutchinson, 1,129. Okay, so now... Attorney General is another interesting race. Absolutely. Let's find out what's going on there. Uh, Dana Nessel, uh, has 141,000, uh, five, 518, these are county numbers, and uh, DiPerno has 94,000, so it's uh, Nestle with uh, 50, almost 50, almost 59 percent, and DiPerno with uh, 39 percent. Again, I want to remind you, these are very early numbers with uh, 37 out of uh, 511 precincts reporting. So with the very early results. Okay, and for our state numbers for Michigan Attorney General, we have Dana Nessel at 174,801 votes and Matthew DiPerno at 144,625. So um, a difference of, you know, his is at 44%. Less than 2% okay, with less than 2% reporting at this time. So it's pretty interesting so far. <laughs> right. You have, um, you know, I'm just looking at some of the, um, the facts in terms of, you know, how long an attorney general, like um, the fact that she would serve or he would serve a four-year term limited to two terms in office. Um, you know, it's just interesting as, as things come in. The fact that right. we were talking about before 1% now it's at 2% reporting. Okay. Yeah, let's take a look at the uh, ninth district and see what's going on for the congressional representative. At this point, it uh, looks like the uh, Republicans are doing pretty well. We have uh, Brian Jay at 13,358 and Lisa McLean at 29,000, I'm sorry, 29,455. So it's 30% for Democrats and uh, 80, I'm sorry, uh, 66 percent right. for the uh, Lisa McLean. And, these and are again, the county. these are county numbers mm -hmm. and with seven out of 84 precincts reporting. So again, I want to stress that these are very, very early numbers. Right. And just also to stress that Lisa McLean is the incumbent. She assumed office in 2021 and was preceded by Paul Mitchell. So we're going to go on to State Senator, 24th District. Let's take a look at uh, State Senator now. Um, We've got uh, Ruth Johnson running against uh, uh, Teresa. Is it Forgney? Okay, and so Ruth Johnson has fifteen thousand ninety-six votes, and the Democrat Teresa Fugney has six thousand seventy-three. So she's at looks like twenty-eight point sixty-nine percent, and that's three of thirty-nine precincts reporting at this time. Right. So Ruth Johnson has a big, uh, she, she's uh, well known in the state. Okay, so now we're going to look at the state rep, the 54th district. We have um, Shadia Martini, 4,766, and then Donnie Steele, he is at 6,493. Uh, our own, our own, uh, our own uh, Donnie Steele, who is our former township treasurer is doing fairly well at this point with, uh, again, a very early reporting results. It looks like a little bit of a lead there. So it's interesting to look at some of the facts and to see how each um, term plays out. So now we're going to look at Oakland County Commissioner uh, 6th District. And we're showing uh, Sarah Pounds at 3,231. Michael Gingle at uh, 6,507. 6, Again, Mike Gingell has been uh, an incumbent in this uh, area for a long time and is doing very well. Okay, so those numbers are, you know, it's, it's trickling in, right? We have a couple of um, things here. So um, Jingle is the uh, Minority Caucus Vice Chairperson 
and in December of 2021, he adopted a new plan that set boundaries and seats for the county commission district. So just a lot of ginjal. I keep getting that one, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. right. Yeah. So he is an incumbent, and so um, hopefully we'll get you know a few more numbers in before we wrap this up. Okay, so now we're going to turn to state uh, Supreme Court Justice. We have Richard uh, Bernstein at 130, 130,828. Kyra Bolden at 88,309. We have Paul Hudson at 44,171. And then Kerry Lee Morgan will cap it up there at 21,707. So this is 49 out of 511 precincts reporting. And these are county numbers. So here there are two seats up for election. Right. Um, they serve an eight-year term, and they're limited to two terms in office. Here's the state numbers for uh, Supreme Court. Uh, Richard Bernstein again uh, in the lead at 143,000. Uh, Kara Bolden at uh, 93,000. Brian Zahara at 91,000. Paul Hudson at 50,000. And Carrie Morgan at 25,000. And again, I believe it's the top two that uh, are, are elected. Right. Those two seats are up. All right, so now let's take a look at a few um, local races here in the area of Lake Orion. We have Village Lake Orion Council member. And we're going to look at um, Carl Sarowski at 313, Douglas Hobbs, 269. Boy, that's really, um, that's really close. Bradley, is it Matheson at 248? Nancy Moshier, 371. Teresa Rutt, 292. Ken Van Portfleet, 275. That is close, isn't it? Yeah. Got a lot of those. Um, there are four seats available. I think, I think there's four seats, right? Right, and some of the incumbents are Hobbs, Matheson, Rutt, and Portfleet. And it says here that um, there are four incumbents running for re-election. So once again, the Village Council is made up of seven members. And of the four at-large councilmen, the three receiving the highest number of votes will have a four-year term, and the one that has the fourth highest number of votes will have a two-year term. So, boy, that's really, that's really tight. That's, that's going to be a tight race. Right. Interesting. Okay. Sure. Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at school board and see what's going on there. Okay. We have Thomas F. Daniels. You want to take that one? Sure, Daniels is coming in with 1,484. Uh, Dracos is at 2,230. Uh, Gamachi is at 1,865. Uh, Sanawi is at uh, 2,723. And Jake Singer is at 1,851. And I believe that's uh, how He's, many of those? Uh, I, three seats available. I and think so, there's three seats there. Right. So right now it looks like uh, Dracos and Sanawi are, and uh, Singer are in the lead right that, at this point. Right, and Dracos and Singer are both incumbents. Board members serve about four years, and they're, they do have a staggered term. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's proposal time. Yeah, let's, let's take a look a at some proposals and see what's going on there. Uh, Okay, so this is proposal. I'm trying to look at to see whether or not this is proposal one. Is this, this, this okay, okay? This proposal is, one. is this proposal one. It is, and, and it shows 172,922 for yes. County numbers, all the county okay, so we're going to just start with all the county numbers, and then the nos for this one is 75,180. So it looks like that one's passing with flying colors. Mm -hmm. And this is about the annual public financial disclosure. Right. Just to cap that one off. Okay. Prop two, it looks like uh, it's a yes again. It's 157,889 versus uh, 93,145, 62% saying yes. And again, that's a prop two, which has to... Uh, okay, it's where they're amending the state constitution. Right. So now we're on to prop three. Um, this is a yes at 162,167. And the no's are at 94,838. And take a look at it. This is 49 of 511 precincts reporting. So as we spoke to uh, Penny, she says they're going to be working until at least midnight right. trying to get all of this we done. Won't. 
Yeah, let's take a look at the state numbers at the, on the props. Those are the important ones. Uh, for um, Prop 1, uh, again, uh, disclosure of your financial information if you're in one of the uh, top jobs in the state. Looks like 69% are saying yes, people should disclose. Uh, on Prop 2, uh, again, the yeses are about 61% versus 39% uh, for the uh, Prop 2, which is promoting the vote. And on the abortion issue, which is Proposal 3, looks like the yeses are at 58% and the noes at 42%. And again, that's a state level. Yeah, we've only got 2% reporting at this point, so this could go, again, uh, these are very early numbers. It could go kind of either way. But looks like right now the yeses on the proposals look like they're uh, ahead at this point. You know, it was interesting, too, that, you know, Penny mentioned that it was a lot of first-time voters yeah. and that, you know, there was a lot of excitement. And I wonder with all the different things coming out with the proposals and all the, um, you know, all the different... Um, you know things going on it's like everybody just felt the need to get out there and and I think a lot of the younger voters through. are getting energized right. it's the first time in a long time but I think we're, we're seeing that mm -hmm. the last time they were really got energized I think was when Obama started to run back a few years ago but uh, we, we're starting okay so we do have um, the the millage we're going to check to see how that's doing. It looks like um, it's at a yes, 2,238 for the parks millage and no 1,743. So we spoke to Chris Barnett and he's hopeful that people do renew this millage right. because he's still got a lot to do. We've got a lot to do in the park system. That's right. And the fact that he mentioned um, a beach and that it would be free, I mean, that's, yeah. that in itself would be. Yeah, that's uh, really great. Nice. So there's, yeah, there's a lot of good things happening and Aaron Watley, who is the uh, guy who is responsible for parks, is doing a terrific job, in my opinion. Right, definitely. You know, this takes me back to when um, I, I, you know, I remember doing this. I majored, minored. Let me say, correct myself. I minored in political science. Did you? And you I did, and <laughs> I just remember always going out and, you know, just supporting supporting people and, you know, going to the election parties afterwards. But canvassing, you know, that was really big. You know, and just to, to see, you know, how how big it was yeah. and at that age, you know, maybe 18 or 19 going out there and doing that. It was great. So really nice. Okay. There's another, you know, there's another huge millage uh, one on the uh, uh, on the transportation in Oakland County. Actually, it's more than Oakland County, but it's the transportation. It looks like that one at this point is at 57% uh, are saying yes versus uh, 42% saying no. So again, it's 49 out of 511 uh, precincts reporting. But uh, early results looks like that might, pa might pass. And just to talk about that, this is a levy um, for the purpose of funding public transportation services in Oakland County, right. including operating, maintaining, improving, and also extending uh, transit services. So to see that it's um, a yes this early, you know, let's, let's see how it plays out. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because a lot of people that live in the northern Oakland County areas are saying, gee, this is, really doesn't do much for me. Right. But uh, hopefully it would expand and uh, give us some services. Okay. All right, so as you can see, we've got, you know, a lot going. 2%. We've been on air <laughs> since 8.30 and it's 2% it's reporting, but they're going to just keep, you know, giving us more information. All right, so we do have a couple of updates coming in for um, the governor, so let's take a look at that one. Statewide governor? Statewide. 53% uh, Whitmer at this point and 46% uh, for Tudor Dixon. Uh, again, uh, these are very, very preliminary numbers and uh, it looks like about 4% at this point. Okay, and if we could keep it on that image for just a bit, um, Whitner, Whitmer was first elected governor in 2018 after defeating Attorney General um, Bill Schutte, and she succeeded Rick Snyder. And prior to being governor, she was a member of the State House from 2001 to 2006 and the State Senate from 2006 to 2015. And then uh, Dixon worked in steel sales from 2002 to 2017 before entering the news media 
and working as an anchor for America's Voice News. So if Whitmer wins re-election, she will be Michigan's first governor elected from the same party as a sitting president since 1990. And uh, between 1994 and 2018, Michigan residents elected governors from the opposite party um, as a sitting president. So if Dixon or another candidate um, other than Whitmer wins, Whitmer will be the first governor to, to lose. But at this point, it looks like she has a pretty decent lead. Again, it's early, very early. Very early. And, uh, you know, I don't know how, how many of the outlying areas have uh, reported at this point. Right. But um, it looks like she has a, a, a slight lead at this point. And I think it's going to be a very close race, based on all the polling that we've seen at least. Okay, so let's talk about that. We have 10% for county numbers, so let's look at... Okay, for governor, we have Gretchen Whitmer um, at 100, 157,756, which is 59.94%. And then we have Tudor Dixon at 102, 131. So, like you said, it's, you know... Oakland County close. looks like it's uh, kind of moving towards uh, the Democratic side at this point. But again, I want to stress that this is only about 10% of the uh, precincts reporting. Yep, still more to go. All right, if we can go maybe look at the um, Secretary of State and see how that's doing. Um, we know that Jocelyn Benson is the Democratic incumbent, and she's at 159,967, and uh, Karamo is at 95,509. So again, that's a fairly strong lead at this point for Benson. But again, I want to stress these are very early, early, early results. It is. And just to give, you know, I always like, you know, giving some of the facts behind it. The fact that this is a four-year term, it's limited to two terms in office. Right. And um, it oversees the elections in Michigan. And um, that person is responsible for handling all of the administrative aspects of the uh, ballot initiative process. So very interesting um, jobs at best. Well, Benson has been under a, a lot of pressure, basically, because of... Uh, you know, all these these claims of uh, election fraud and so on. Right. And based on what I've seen, at least, she's done a terrific job in uh, in uh, running the elections in Michigan. And handling things. What's your opinions on the campaign ads this season? The campaign ads this season have been uh, unbelievable, right. don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> We've been inundated with, with um, a you lot know, of You know, what's them. interesting is it seems like a lot of the ads take a little snippet of what somebody says. Right. You know, and then all of a sudden, uh, it, it gets thrown into a situation where you're 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 editing to to the ads to uh, your your benefit, and yeah. it happens on both sides. I can't right. I can't say it's one can't side. Can't say it's one sided, right? You but, know, I was I was watching something earlier this week, and they said that most people made up their mind back in September. Like at least thirty percent of them made up their mind, and so you wonder how much money they spent on all the the campaign ads to get oh, the, people to change their mind to vote for them. The amount of money spent on these ads is just uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's, right. You know, here's, you, let's take a situation where you got somebody who gets paid $150,000 to be a, a, you know, a, a representative in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and they spend millions of dollars to, to try to convince people to vote for that person. Right. And, and like I say, some of the ads are really sleazy. And, the <laughs> and, and, and they're, right. they're negative. There's there's more negative ads than positive. What, what I want to hear from a what, what I want to hear from a, a candidate is what are you going to do for me? What are you going to do? Right. Not how bad the other guy is. I want to I want to hear. Listen, here's our here's my program. Here's our, here's all the things I'm going to do for you, and if I like that, then I would vote for that person. But for somebody to stand there and say this guy is really bad or this lady is really bad. Is it just it just turns me off? It does, but I, I will say this: I'm normally I'm the type where I channel surf and I'm constantly doing that. But during election season, I like to look at the ads. I like to see do you? some of the mudslinging. I do. <laughs> I have to admit it. I have a TiVo machine, okay. and I try to record everything. And as soon as a political ad comes on, I zip right through it. You do? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, let's let's see how how things play out. So, of course. Yeah, so of course, um, you know, if we're looking at this, we're at 10%, probably 15% reporting, what have you, but really interesting race. I'm glad that um, everyone was energized and, you know, ready to go out there and vote. It's going to be really interesting uh, results. I can't wait to see the uh, national results because there's some very interesting races 
especially in Pennsylvania and Arizona and Nevada and some of these other states where uh, they're considered battleground states. Right. And uh, it's going to be very tight races, I'm, I'm afraid. Well, one thing I can say is that it's always great meeting up with you and doing this election coverage. So. Maybe we'll do it again next year. Absolutely. All right. Well, great. that'll do it for us. Thank you so much for joining us for this 2022 general election coverage. We appreciate you. Thanks again for watching. And don't forget, stay posted because they still have lots of results coming in. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Good stuff.